Hi everybody, uh, just a quick video uh, for this first part of the Bismarck build, just a preview really of what we're going to be doing uh, with the model. Uh, particularly I just want to have a look uh, in the anatomy of the ship book just to establish uh, exactly what colour scheme I'm going to be using uh, for the model. Uh, I think I mentioned uh, in the previous video uh, when I announced the building of the Bismarck uh, that even though the ship's career was pretty short, it underwent a number of uh, colour changes uh, and camouflage changes through that period of probably a month to six weeks. So the anatomy of the ship book will help us establish uh, that colour scheme. The other thing I want to do is just have a quick look through the Pontos set. That'll just give you an idea for those of you that have not seen one of these uh, detail sets before, exactly what's involved. Uh, so we'll go through that as well. Uh, what I'm going to be doing in the first build episode, which will be next time, will be to just make a couple of alterations to the hull. And by that, I'm just going to be modifying the underside just to square it off a little bit. I'll go into this in a bit more detail when we come to do the work. And probably just do a little bit of work on the bow of the ship as well, just to sharpen it up a little bit. But in general, I'm pretty happy with the shape of the hull. So not too much work to be done on that, I don't think. So that's for the first build episode next time. So uh, we'll bring the camera over. I'll just go through, first of all, the colour scheme that I'm intending to do. And then we'll have a look at the Pontos set. I'm not going to be uh, going through the trumpeter kit parts in detail. There are plenty of reviews. Uh, on YouTube and elsewhere on the internet for you to have a look at if you're interested in the uh, trumpeter plastic part so I'm not going to be doing that but not everyone has seen one of these Pontos sets so I will be taking a look at that. Okay so let's take a quick look at the anatomy of the ship book. I think this is probably a fairly essential uh, reference uh, if you're building the model, particularly if you're using a detail set like the Pontos set. And I know from experience of building the Pontos set with the hood that the instructions in those sets aren't the best and often you need to turn to references to just clarify uh, where some of the detail parts, particularly the etched brass parts, fit. Uh, so, as I said, I think it's pretty essential to have this sort of information. The first thing I'm going to establish is the colour scheme. Those of you that have seen models of the Bismarck will probably realise that the majority of models built have the what are called the Baltic stripes, these camouflage disruptive markings on the side of the hull and the bow wave camouflage here, the dummy bow wave and also the stern uh, wave as well. The Baltic camouflage, uh, particularly early on, went all the way up the bridge structure and onto the rear structure as well. And that's quite a challenge for modelers to apply that. Uh, and particularly if you're using fine etch brass railings and other pieces of etch brass on things like the bridge structure, because masking and painting the camouflage is a real difficulty. So let's just have a look at the main changes to the schemes on the ship. Uh, you can see at the beginning of the book here, we've got some really nice reference photographs. This, these were taken uh, on commissioning of the ship whilst it was in the shipyard, the Blom and Voss shipyard in Hamburg. They're really clear and they give tons of detail that uh, we'll be coming back to as we get into the build. You can see here, lots for us to be going on to. It'll be very difficult uh, to misinterpret some of the parts that we're going to be adding to the model. Uh, these will be a great help. The other thing we have to back up those photographs are these very detailed drawings and they're also accompanied by these schematic uh, CAD drawings, I think they are, uh, of the same area. So. So these drawings will make it much easier to complete the project, I think. There are also loads of detailed drawings covering the armament, the deck equipment, the masts and the rig are also really well covered here. 
enough for us there to be able to choose how much of the rig I'm going to apply. I don't think I'll be doing all of it. It's very, very complex as you can see. But I'll just select uh, the main areas to cover in the build. I'll probably stick to the radio rig uh, and the signals rigging uh, for the model. But we'll see when we get to that point. We're a long way off having to make that decision. There's all the fire control equipment, the range finders, binoculars and so on. And all the fittings for the ship, the deck fittings, the anchor gear. And we also have uh, references for the Arado aircraft that were carried uh, on board the ship. And in particular, we've got detail of the actual uh, code letters for the aircraft carried. So lots to be going at, but let's just turn back to the various schemes that were applied to the ship. This first scheme is as the ship was on its commissioning day on the 24th of August 1940. And in this configuration, a lot of the armament uh, and things like the radio, radar uh, fit out isn't actually on the ship yet. That was uh, fitted later on. The next option, and I think this is probably the option that most modelers would go for, it's certainly the one that most of the models that I've seen uh, look like, and this has got the so-called Baltic camouflage, so the disruptive patterns flashes on the side, and the false bow and stern waves. At this stage the uh, ship also had air recognition markings, uh, in the form of red turret tops for uh, turret Anton and turret Dora here at the aft side and also the uh, swastika on the red band at the bow of the ship and on the stern as well. So in one form or another this is how you'd most commonly see uh, models finished with the Baltic stripes on it. Not all the models I've seen cover the uh, air recognition markings. I think that's probably something that's come to light fairly recently. I'm not sure, but uh, I can't recall many models that have those air recognition markings on them. The interesting thing about them also is that the gun barrels of the uh, turrets above the two with the markings have got the barrels painted in red as well. So again, we've got the configuration as in March 1941. Uh, as the ship lie in Kiel Harbour for final fitting out. Some fantastic uh, views of the midsection superstructure and the bridge. The next configuration is uh, dated the 5th of May 1941, so uh, just about three weeks before the engagement with the Hood and the Prince of Wales uh, at the Denmark Strait. And this configuration was of the ship when it was lying off Gotenhafen, as it was then, it's now Gdynia, and it was uh, the date of Hitler's visit to the uh, ship, now that it was ready for action, so it has been completely fitted out. It retained the Baltic stripes and the bow and stern waves, but at this point the yellow turret tops had appeared on both the primary and secondary armament. So that would make quite an interesting scheme. Again, we've got some uh, further out views of the ship, or three quarter views. The last uh, configuration is for the uh, Denmark Strait. So we're going forward to the 24th of May, just three weeks later. We've got two different views here. The interesting thing about these next uh, profiles or plans uh, is that we can see that for the Battle of the Denmark Strait on the 24th of May, the Baltic stripes have been overpainted, but you can still see them through the fresh paint. So there's a slight difference. And we know that the hull of the ship wasn't painted, it was just overpainted on the Baltic stripes. They've been removed pretty well from the superstructure but we can see them faintly uh, on the sides of the ship. The other interesting feature at this stage is this black smudge 
uh, on the starboard aft side of the ship. And that was a result of an accident, a refueling accident in Gdynia, where a fuel hose uh, broke loose when it was taking on oil and spilled on the side of the ship. So that'll be an interesting little uh, detail to add to the scheme. So I'm going to go for the scheme as she was on the 24th of May, when she faced the Hood and the Prince of Wales. And there are a number of reasons for that. I like the interest of the semi-painted out uh, Baltic stripes. We retain the bow waves that I think are interesting and stern waves. It gives us the opportunity as well to chicken out uh, applying the camouflage stripes, the disruptive stripes, up onto the superstructure which would be very complicated with the Pontos set. We can see that the turret tops, the air recognition markings have been painted out uh, so the turret tops are all grey, both the primary and secondary armament. But this volume suggests that by the 27th of May, uh, at Bismarck's last battle, when she was finally sunk, the air recognition markings had reappeared on the primary turrets. I'm not absolutely convinced about that. I think by this stage, uh, there was a lot of aerial activity. The ship was being tracked uh, all the time during the day and it seems to me that having such a distinctive feature uh, would be a bit of a giveaway really so I'm, I'm not convinced about that but I don't have to worry because as I said I'm going to go for this uh, configuration on the 24th of May. The other reason uh, of course for doing the 24th of May is that I've already built the hood uh, and I'm going to be displaying the two models together uh, in a twin display case. So I want them to be uh, of the same period. I've built the hood uh, as she was on the 24th of May. So I'm going to be doing the same for the Bismarck. So this is what she was going to look like. So the anatomy of the ship book, an essential uh, partner for us going forward into the build. So a really important reference for us. And where I use it during the build, I will show you the relevant drawing uh, in the build video. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is the Pontos set. So this particular set is 27001F1, which is the advanced set. Pontos, in fact, do three different versions. They do a Bismarck uh, basic set, which I think lacks the wooden deck. They do an add-on set, which gives you the wooden deck and a couple of extra frets of uh, etch brass as well. And the advanced set, which this one is, uh, just combines those two basic and add-on sets together in the same box. So that's what we're going to be working with. So let's take a look inside. I've removed the instructions. We're going to take a look at those later on. Because they're all sealed in my folder. This uh, first box contains the photo etch sheets. So in this particular pack we've got 13 sheets of brass and one of stainless steel. So this first fret contains the parts for the ship's uh, catapult. So you can see how much work goes into just that one assembly. There are probably uh, half a dozen, a dozen parts in the trumpeter kit but there's lots on here. There's probably the best part of 120 parts just for the catapult. So it just gives you an idea of uh, what sort of task you've got uh, assembling one of these Pontos sets. The next fret has a big area of deck uh, around the hangar area of the ship. So again, we're staying with the catapult, various parts for the hose reels, uh, a few ladders, uh, and some vents as well. Next up we've got an armament sheet. Uh, so this has got some of the uh, mesh extensions to the emplacements, the parts for all the various weapons as well. The Bismarck carried quite a number of different uh, anti-aircraft weapons so we'll have uh, quite a bit of interest here getting all the different ones put together. We've also got some uh, vents here. I think these are for the funnel sides, but I'm not sure about that. 
and one or two pieces of rig here down at the bottom. This fret carries the accommodation ladders and some of the platforms and quite a number of parts for the ship's aircraft. We can see the uh, struts here for the floats, the canopies, the dollies for the catapults and also some uh, folded wing interiors uh, if that's how you want to display the aircraft. This frame contains uh, parts for the funnel so we've got the awning rails, some of the platforms around the funnel and also the radar arrays here. These are the sort of details that really uh, can only be reproduced in etch brass. I can't imagine trying to get that sort of finesse. It would be impossible in plastic. So uh, it's one area where ship modelling really benefits from the use of etch brass. This fret has a number of platforms and railings to it. We've also got the uh, searchlight faces as well, both covered and uncovered. Next up, we've got the uh, ladders for the ship. These uh, parts here are drilling templates. Uh, this one is for the, I think it was a kind of a sonar uh, arrangement on the side of the hull below the waterline. These are drilling templates here for all these tiny rails, which I think were steps going up the side of the uh, superstructure and the hull as well. So the use of those templates will enable us to get those nice and neat and in a straight line all aligned properly. Got a couple of identical frets now for the ship's boats. We can see the decks of each of them here and also the uh, gear for the main cranes as well provided in etch brass. When I built the boats for the hood I can't remember now how many there were, there were quite a few, uh, but these are almost models in their own right. It takes uh, quite a while to get these put together, but they really do make a difference if they're done well, they make a real difference to the finished model. We've also got some portals and uh, scuttles here, so we can display those in a mixture of open and closed states, just to add a bit of interest to the model. This one's a bit of a mixture of parts on it. There's obviously a platform here, which I think is one of the bridge platforms, a couple of railings. I'm not sure what all these other parts are. There's some stanchions uh, on this fret as well. But we'll find out soon enough. These are a number of vents with louvers on them. These are the individual louvers that need to be fitted uh, onto the vent opening itself. I can imagine I'm going to need uh, some sedatives when I come to do that. It looks pretty daunting to be honest. The rest of the fret has some doors and hatches on it. Another fret here with some of the boat crutches on it. Some more frames, parts of the anchor gear, another part for the funnel up here. This frame carries a number of parts uh, which look on first sight like degaussing coils but I don't think the ship carried a degaussing coil so there might just be electrical conduits uh, for the superstructure again that's something that we'll discover as we get into the build here we've got more deck parts uh, bulkhead doors which can be positioned open or closed they've got uh, front and back faces on them uh, and one or two parts for the one or two part and one or two more parts for the ship's boats and some of the hose reels here. The last fret here in stainless steel uh, is a bit alarming really because it's got hundreds of these stanchions all with individual uh, rigging holes on them. Uh, each one of these stanchions has got three rigging holes in so I'm hoping that we're not going to have to rig all those individually. Uh, that will definitely uh, send me off the edge probably. But the fact that they're in stainless steel, which is a lot tougher than brass, suggests that that's indeed what you need to do with them. The use of brass for stanchions doesn't really work. It's too thin and when you come to rig it, it just distorts. Uh, so this stainless steel would be better, but I'm hoping against hope that I'm not going to have to use all of those. 
So that's a quick canter through the uh, etch brass parts. Next up we've got some uh, resin and turned brass. The propellers in the hood really weren't that good. They needed an awful lot of work to make them presentable. They were better than the plastic kit parts, but I was a little bit disappointed and these don't look a lot better than uh, the ones in the hood. For the resin, we've got some new uh, ship's boat hulls here. So six of those. And also the blast bags for the primary and secondary armament as well. Now for the turned brass parts, the first thing I've done, and I've done this a while ago when I first got the set, uh, is to put them all on card. So they've all been sorted and I've counted them all just to make sure that they're all present and fixed them to this card with the part number on them. So you can see that that makes the job of finding them quite a bit easier. And I did that a while ago because I wanted, first of all, to check that all the parts were present. And secondly, to make sure that uh, they were all in some sort of order when I came to build the kit. So we've obviously, the most obvious things here are the main armament barrels. We've got the secondary armament barrels in this bag. We've got the hose reels and bollards here down at the bottom. The masts in the kit are completely replaced with uh, turned brass. So an awful lot sturdier than the plastic, particularly when we come to rig the model. We have pedestals here for some of the anti-aircraft weapons and very tiny barrels for the guns as well. So all of these again will make a big difference. The turned brass barrels, particularly for the secondary armament and smaller, are a lot better, a lot finer than the uh, kit parts. The main armament, not so much so. The uh, barrels in the trumpeter kit for the main armament aren't too bad actually, but even so, I'll be obviously using the brass ones. This last uh, bag has another brass fret in it, which, as you can see, obviously contains the railings and one of the platforms, I think, for the back side of the uh, funnel. But we also have the wooden decks in this bag, and I'm not going to remove them. I don't want to get them marked uh, or start to pull them out of their cutouts. And the Pontos decks on the hood were really good. They're a really good fit. And I was a little bit concerned about how well they would stick to the model. But I can tell you that I've had absolutely no problem with the completed model of the hood. I've not got a trace of the wooden decks uh, lifting on that model. One thing I did do uh, when I fitted the decks to the hood was to make sure that the surfaces were completely flat and smooth and I also gave the plastic a coat of gloss varnish and that just gave me a very smooth clean surface dust free surface before I fitted the wooden decks and as I said I've had no problem at all uh, with those lifting they're really well detailed uh, nice plank detail on them and nice uh, detail of the surrounds to the decks as well. So I'm really looking forward to using these. When you come to fit the decks, it somehow just transforms the whole of the model and really brings it on in leaps and bounds once you've got to, to this stage. The last couple of things provided in the Pontos set are a set of uh, rub down transfers, I'm going to call these, not decals or decals, whichever you want to call them. These are rubbed down and as you can see uh, we've got the markings for all the aircraft, we've got the draft marks here and we've got some other markings uh, for the sides of the ship I think they are. I didn't have a lot of success with the rubbed down markings on the hood for the draft, mar draft marks. I found them very difficult to apply so hopefully we'll have some better luck with these. The last part of the Pontos package is this 
uh, die cut masking sheet and this is for the uh, swastikas on the bow and stern of the ship. As I'm representing the ship on the 24th of May the swastikas had been painted over so I'm not going to be using these. I might use the circle templates uh, to paint the greyed out area on the bow and the stern. But it's a nice touch from Pontos to include that. So that's the Pontos set. I'm just going to make sure that that wooden deck is nice and flat on the bottom of the box. I don't want to crack or chip that. So if you've not seen a Pontos set before, that's hopefully given you a bit of insight into what we're facing over the next probably year of build. I think the investment in the advanced set is worthwhile. The wooden decks really, as I said, do transform the model. They're really good. Although I'm not sure exactly what's in the extra frets, I'll have to check that out. Obviously that's going to add some more detail as well. And it's certainly a bit cheaper than buying the uh, basic and add-on set later on. So we'll be digging into that fairly soon when we uh, start the build uh, in a couple of weeks time. So that's it for this short preview video. Uh, I've got the Mosquito uh, to finish off. Those of you that have been following that, don't worry. Uh, I'm not going to be leaving that. It will get done in the next couple of weeks, I think. But I will be making a start on the Bismarck uh, in the next couple of weeks, just doing those hull modifications. And that will be uh, the first part of the build series uh, in part two of the playlist. So I hope you'll join me for either the end of the Mosquito or the start of the Bismarck build. In the meantime, everybody look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.